Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope your year was excellent as mine was. But uh, anyway, I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas. Um, in case, yeah, in case you didn't see my tweet, <laughs> um, Happy New Year to you. This is the last day of the year, and um, I definitely want to end it out with a with a bang. Um, doing my last video, um, working with a. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Hope machine it was as uh, as mine was. <laughs> Forgot to turn off that uh Okay guys. Sorry about that. I uh, clicked the wrong button. Let me um it's crazy. That's definitely not ending the year. With the bang. Okay. I think I'm all set up. Let's make sure I got everything. Check, check, one, two. Apparently I had uh another another window with my YouTube and it was playing back and that was pretty whack as you can see. Alright, anyway, uh the cool thing about Google Plus when I came back on it let me finish where I started, so that's cool and mad kudos to Google Plus for that. I thought I had to like re um like start up a whole nother uh, broadcast or whatever, but um we're going let me check something. I just wanna make sure just wanna make sure that everything is good before we get started. Um make sure you guys can hear me and do my YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Again, I apologize. I, I hate doing stuff like this. Like when I'm starting I'm starting out, you know, trying to trying to show you guys something. Okay. Alright, I think I'm good. Cool. So alright, I had a question somebody asked me when um well it was couple of weeks ago I guess and I wanted to wait till I do another a video um, like a live and so I could just show you live so the question was how do you get your well I actually had this question several times how do you get your the machine to work inside a Logic Pro it's very simple um, a lot of people are familiar with the um, the drag and drop feature and uh, I know how to do it but I I do it every once in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I if I have a need to, you know, when, when I whenever I need to do that, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still fighting this cold. I don't know why. Um, say like, um, sometimes I have an instance where I'm um I program a kick inside of here, and I'm inside a Logic Pro, and uh, for whatever reason, I, I like the kick, and I like to do further things with it. Like, but actually, this all started when I was working in the NK1 version. Um, I'll, I'll take that kick out and just, you know, loop it or whatever the case may be, but I'll put like some, some other effects and other things to it. And But when I was doing that, I was like I said, that was an MK1. That was the Mark 1 version where um, the machine wouldn't do a lot of stuff that this one does now. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to let me show you. Just let me um, pull up a new New session in, in Logic, and I'm working with Logic Pro X. Just to let you know, Logic Pro X, and I'm gonna pull up uh, an empty project, and I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Share my desktop. Okay. Sorry about that. If the camera went to that matrix effect or whatever, but uh, okay, um, here we're gonna create an instrument here, and uh, first thing we're gonna do is is bring up um, native instruments. I don't know if you guys can see me because I can't zoom in. So if you can just follow me, basically what I'm gonna do is. Select, uh, you know, where you will pull up a new instrument, you know, first 
being in the instrument track, right? And go all the way down to AU instruments, right? And then native instruments, and then over to machine two. Um, in most people cases, you know, if you don't have the uh, machine studio, you will go to machine and click on stereo. In my case, it would be machine two, and I'll click on stereo. So either or whichever one you, you wish to work with. Um, um, actually, this is, uh, to be honest, I don't even know why I said that. I'm not even thinking. You don't really need the Machine Studios, but it's that, that those features were for if you have Machine Studio 2.0. That's what it is. I'm sorry about that. I, I misquoted that. Um, so if you got Machine 2.0, um, definitely it will say Machine 2. Okay, so this is this is what's going on here, right? I pulled up a plug-in. This is a plug-in inside of uh, Logic Pro X. And just like you will work in Machine Studio by itself, the plugin, well, not the plugin, but the, the standalone program by itself, it's the same way inside of Logic, but it's only, the only difference is, well, it's a little bit complicated if, if you ask me because it's like you got to know how to work Machine and you got to know how to work Logic Pro. So if you understand how both of those work, then you you know, you definitely work in both of them the way that they work. You know, you know, if you if you understand what I'm saying, let me show you right quick. Let me let me um okay, this is the plug in. Um it, it, you know, you know, like I was saying before, you know, in, in, in machine, well, as always, you got to set up scenes in order for it to go to the next scene or pattern the whatever uh pattern that you have selected for that scene. This is the same thing works inside of Logic Pro if you have it, you know, if you had it uploaded as a plugin as well. So it's the same difference. Um, and you, um, the unique thing about it, you know, it's just, everything is the same. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm really trying to explain it. But um, okay, let's work with something. Let's let's pull up another. I'm gonna pull up another track instrument track and let's work with something inside of Logic Pro and you know pull up uh, mm, let's see let's pull up any sound you know just work with something here Um, I have the other machine activated, so I'm going to turn that off. Okay. I'm going to do something simple, you know what I mean? Something real simple. I'm going to go to one. Okay, one to the four then. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. All right, so you know that's simple enough, right? I'm uh, quantize that just so you know. Loop that for about four bars, okay? Okay, so now going back to the machine, I go, let's say. I pull up a sound, and, and, and you know the workflow that you're used to before inside a machine is the same way as a plug-in inside of the Logic Pro. Um, so let's go with some claps. Now the only thing is, when you're working like this, um, your workflow will definitely slow down if you don't, if you're not familiar with this. But like you know, um, the play. And the start feature, or the restart button on on the machine, does not does not work when we're doing it this way. So you know, um, you still have to hit the space bar to stop and play. You know what I mean? In order to uh, continue your workflow, I guess. But um, just like this, you don't have to be in record mode. You know, 
this is just what Logic does, but like I, you, all you gotta do is select the instrument. And what I like to do, I like to label whatever whatever track machine is on, just so I know. Now that's the most important. I label all of my stuff, but this is the first thing that I label, just so because when you're doing when you working in here, see I like to work organized, right? And when I get to a certain point, I like to go and erase tracks that I'm not using because those are extra instruments and plugins and you know what I mean, other things that's just taken from my CPU. And if I'm not using it, it's like pointless. So I delete tracks that I don't need, you know, because sometimes our 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 uh, import a track, an instrument track, and change my mind on the sound or take a different route or something like that and you know I mean I just have whatever you get what I'm saying so Did was I turned the metrodone on on my machine? Just you know, that's keeping the time. And I don't have uh, the metrodone inside of uh, yeah, I don't have it on inside the Logic Pro. Let's go for a kick or something. So again. All the other buttons on the machine works. Like you gotta, you definitely gotta hit record, but you just can't hit the play or the restart button, you know, to activate this this session right here. So. Showing you a couple of things inside a machine. Um, well, inside a Logic Pro via a machine studio. Uh, let's add some hats to it right quick. Most people will probably go here and drag over a sound, but that's not what I want to do. So, say like I want to um, want everything to change up at bar five. Um, you know, copy that over or do something different. But I'm just gonna copy it over and go inside of my scene. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate that and just add more. You, you kind of see where I'm going with this, you know. You you in, inside a machine, you're still building it as though you were in the standalone plugin. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, the standalone uh, software, but you just brought that workflow over into Logic Pro. So it's like you work, you merge two different workflows, and you gotta like try to, you know, <laughs> try to work through it. Without getting confused, you know what I'm saying? Because like, if 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 you are uh, proficient like me inside of both, it's like it's two different workflows. But I learned to deal with it, you know what I mean? So, and and you know, Logic Pro X, the ability to 
um, loop and you know what I mean, copy and paste over is way easier than it is in, inside of a uh, machine. But then again, it's, it's also easy as well, but it's just a different way of doing it. That's all, you know, it's, it's all about scenes on, on uh, inside a machine and, you know, Logic Pro is just taking the region and copying it over or loop it or something like that. <laughs> Okay, so I want to I want to add another sound. Um, show you something that I do that you know it's a little trick I use sometimes um, now you're not recording inside of Logic Pro X but sometimes I'll hit the R on my on my uh, my keyboard not not my uh, my instrument keyboard but the, uh, the the typing keyboard and I'll, I'll uh, uh, and basically it's really giving me time to come in on one on the machine but you're not recording inside of Logic Pro, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, I'll just hit R, and I have I have mine set up where it toggles between record, record in, and record out. So, like, check this out. Notice what I did. I, I I hit, you know, if you're paying attention, um, it lit up red like this, and I toggle out, and it turns back to blue. If you you know, if you can catch that. So basically, to avoid programming anything inside of Logic Pro, well, it won't do it anyway. I'm you know. Before I had that issue, like when I was in, uh, what was I think it was Logic Pro Nine, where, where if if I was if I had uh, whatever um, channel that I had machine on, and if it's activated, um, it's on to record, it will actually record the MIDI notes, and that was something I had an issue with. Um, I believe that was Logic Pro Nine, but now it it doesn't do that. I don't think. So I had to record on. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. So it, I, I guess it don't matter. It doesn't matter, but you know, I just like to just toggle it off. Anyway, it's a, it's a force of habit, I guess. Now, going back to um, um okay, I got two scenes, right? I got two scenes worth. Four bars each, and as you know, inside of uh, Machine Studio, you, you're going to hit all, go into the, the you know, hit the, uh, the scene button, hit all to play all of it at once. I'm gonna take this and loop this all the way from bar one all the way to bar eight, and and you can hear the difference. <laughs> It, it, it didn't do what I wanted to do, and I know why. It's because we didn't um, duplicate the. Um, let's do this. I'm gonna duplicate the pattern. See, see, with machines workflow is. <laughs> that's why I said machine workflows is, is a little, a little harder, because inside of Logic Pro, I can just grab something and just copy and paste it over, right? You know, just simple as that, right? And or if over here I wanted to do something different, you know, I can definitely go inside of here and uh, let's see and change something like I need to. But you know, it's really not that easy inside of Logic. I'm um, sorry. Um, so I could do that. You know what I mean? So like.
see I went I, uh, octave higher, and that's just a matter of editing inside the region inside of Logic Pro. But in here, you got to actually duplicate the patterns as well and make them reflect to whatever scene that you're on, which is sometimes um, a headache. But I mean, I just I just grew to. Um, to you know go with the flow I guess. Alright, so um if you following me, what I did was what I was trying to do was I was trying to to um the second time around, which is at bar five, I was trying to add um a shaker, right? So I'm gonna go back to pattern one. Um I can just go to pattern one inside of a uh, machine itself and, and erase this the um, shaker just select the shaker oh, one second here Yep. All right. So it's gonna do what I, what it, what it's supposed to do. So like the first, the first pattern is without the shaker, and then the shaker gonna come in, you know, the next at bar five, right? So set everything up. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I hope that example was was uh, sufficient enough. Um, obviously, you will continue going like like this, adding more stuff and making the full song this way. Um, and that's just you know sometimes when I'm working inside of uh, when I'm working in both of them, you know both of them at the same time. Um, um, I'm really not doing heavy stuff inside a machine. If I'm doing it like this, I'm really only using machine to do drums, you know, stuff like that, drums and effects, because I love the drums and the effects that comes out of Machine Studio or Mark One or Mark Two, whichever one you have. Um, machine got some great drums, so you know I will use it for that and, and map out Machine to plug in all the way out, you know, the scenes to reflect whatever. Um, I say the great thing about you. You know, I had somebody else that asked me, was it worth, um, was it actually worth um, upgrading to the, uh, what was it, 2.0? Um, I think it's worth it, you know what I mean? Um, because, like, um, they changed a lot of things inside of here. 2.0 now can follow your song um, via bars or the measures. You know, I can I can definitely uh, get a visual of where I am on the machine um, in in reflection to whatever's going on inside of Logic Pro. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna get out of this this session right here. Um, I just want to show so that person who asked me how to do that. So now I finally showed you. Um, give me a comment, shout out, or whatever, and let me know if that definitely helped you. If not, then I'll have to, to um, we have to do something, you know, to help you help you better or whatever. All right. So uh, what I wanted to do was show you, you know, just mess around with. I uploaded a couple of sounds or whatever. Might change it. I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna. As always in all my videos, I never know where I'm heading, so I'm just going to flow. That's why I did not label this one. <laughs> I didn't say pop or hip hop or R&B or country or whatever the case may be, because once I start something, it, it never fails. And I get to the middle of something and then decide I want to change the beat, and it just changes everything. So I don't know. Um, 
I believe I had another question. When it comes to me, I'll let you guys know. I'll try to answer it. Yeah, but you guys can feel free to um follow me on Twitter, K Sound, at K Sound, <clears throat> K S O U N D D. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know, 2014. I plan on doing a lot more of these, and um, you know, got some great things coming. Some some great ideas and things like that. Um, check out the website www.ksound with two D's. Dot com.
Lock up with the corresponding pad patterns. section of the song that I don't want to reflect throughout the song, you know what I'm saying? Like I might, because I'm thinking in the intro, I'm going to take out the claps. But if I don't duplicate the pattern, if I, I, I could duplicate the scenes or whatever, but until I duplicate the patterns, they will all be the same pattern on each scene. And whatever changes I make to that one pattern, you know what I mean, is going to reflect all the other scenes because it's, it's all the same pattern. See, that's that's the complexity of Machine Studio. It's like when when you think you you extending the song or you you know what I mean. You copy and paste this right here and move this over here. You think that you're good, and if you want to add something in one of those things, now you gotta also make sure the patterns. That's what I was saying. The difference between Machine and uh, Logic Pro. Um, I love them both. I love them both. I work, in fact, I work more in here creating ideas than I do, well, I wouldn't say that either. I love them both. <laughs> I love them both. Just like I shared in my other video, I like to mix on the fly because 
the way I vision music, um, it just get cluttered if I'm if everything is down the middle and I can't hear. I you know I, I cannot focus. I can't concentrate. I, I have to hear stuff going in my left speaker and my left in my, in my right speaker. Well, if I got the headphones the same way, I, I need to hear stuff like all around. You know, so when I make my music, I, I make it wide already. And I may go back when I'm done and retweak everything as, as I need. Maybe my, I need my kick to, to, to thump a little harder, you know, a little, little more punch or something like that. I'll go back and put a transient or something on it or a compressor, um, something like that. And it just really depends. But what I try to do is... Uh, when I'm looking for sounds and importing everything in, you know, as you can see, you know, and, and this is this is why I love Machine Studio, the ability to mix and pan things right here on a dedicated screen, dedicated knobs. You know what I'm saying? It makes things more more realistic. The, the workflow is crazy. See, but for stuff like that, it definitely speeds up the workflow inside of Machine Studio, but. I've been doing it the whole time. <laughs> it's just I'll go and use my mouse. Actually, I, I knew how to navigate on the, the Mark I pretty well, so I'll, I'll just go to the main screen and somehow get to the part where I pan or, you know, turn up or down the volume to whatever uh, specific sound I'm, whatever. So I've been doing it all alone, actually, but, you know, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. All right, we're going to keep going. So what I'm looking at now is my volume jump into the red, which I don't want. So that's the other thing I look for as a, as a producer. Um, you definitely don't want, you, you know, I know you feeling it or whatever. I'll turn it down inside the software just so I won't be in the peak, the red in the software, and just turn my, my volume up on my, my interface and on my big knob over here, uh, or, or my mixer, whatever, however I got my sound coming out, I'll bump it in there. But I watch my levels and my meters inside of here. And this the other sweet thing about Machine Studio, there's a meter on here so I can see directly on the machine itself. And I can like toggle between um, the the master out and then the group and the you know individual sound, which is pretty cool. So what I said that I wasn't supposed to do. I forgot to copy over the pattern. But that's only for group A. I did it for group B, so I'm cool. It's nothing but putting the claps back in. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's not a binky. Because that's what I do. You feel me? But it can get messy. Cause I done did like four scenes. And I gotta go back. And okay, let me just work on scene two.
was actually pretty cool. I took, I didn't put the claps. Okay. I can dig that. Let's save this work. Should have done that a long time ago, but you know, y'all got me all focus. So now I gotta figure this thing out. Figure out where I wanna. What would you call this? What is this? What style would you? Hmm. It can be pop because of the sense. But it's got like a um I don't know. This would be pop with an edge. I mean it could easily go as pop. When I'm done with it, it'll end up pop anyway, so um what would I call it? I call it something crazy. Pop the body. <laughs> there we go. Pop the body. Now I gotta go find a pop bottle sound. A bottle sound. <sighs> It'll probably be pretty cool. Hmm. Hmm. Give me ideas. Mm hmm. Something. So now I'm going to put that in. So we're going to go to scene four and we're going to duplicate group A to be pattern three because I'm hearing something else I want to add and I don't want to tamper the other patterns. So therefore, we're going to. Uh, mm, let's see what we have here. Triplet, you know that triplet, it ain't it ain't go because my grid is only at one sixteenth. So um guys if you have any if you wonder like sometimes when you do stuff like even if I use the note repeat and do like um triplets or sixteenths, thirty twos, sixty fours, whatever, and you notice that it don't do it, 
You know, and you play it back like, but I just did that and it, it's not taking it. That's all because you need to go into grid mode and um, adjust the resolution. By default, I believe it's 1 16th. So, what I was doing to begin. To begin. Um, I believe that's 16 triplets. So, hit the corresponding pad. one was off. There we go. Save. is wrong. I think it's 32. So, it was sounding all, all janky. Quantize that to 16, and then my Let's see. Sixteen for what I just did, and quantize it again and see what happens. Uh, it's got a little swing to it. So, so I'm thinking sixteen triplets will work.
these are them type of things that we got to go through making sure the timing so I can't move forward unless the timing is perfect you know what I'm saying but uh I'm not going to uh, stay here and get stuck on this while you guys watch me figure that out because that's like the most boring thing ever watch somebody trying to figure out the timing um, I had a lot of things going on so I'm not thinking all the way right here but anyway I appreciate you guys for watching. I want to say thank you. I want to say happy New Year's to you guys. Have a great year. 2014 is definitely in full effect. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, don't do nothing crazy. You feel me? Um, it's a new year. And um, I definitely got some, some things, some, some great things and I'm looking forward to. And... Um, I will share those things with you guys via my website, Twitter, YouTube, however you definitely know. So, um, yeah, you got any questions, please feel free. Let me know. You know how to find me. It's your boy, KJ. And I'm signing off. And peace.